I don't think I've even dreamed the thought of Mike not being the coach. <laughs> okay, so he does have a unique way of putting things. Dan Graziano, let me start with you, my, my information man extraordinaire. He's saying Mike McCarthy's not going anywhere. So is that to suggest that there will be no significant changes in Dallas after this disaster of a season? Well, I guess it depends what you mean by significant. Obviously, I think we take him at his word that the head coach isn't going anywhere. Um, could they make a change? At, you mentioned their last in defense. Defensive coordinator Mike Nolan, could that be somebody who's on the hot seat? Do they make a change at that position? I know people in the building in Dallas are disappointed that the defense didn't come together. Under Mike Nolan, they thought that it would be better. So I, I would watch out for that. On the offensive side, remember, I mean, Kellen Moore is a holdover from Jason Garrett's staff and, and a favorite of Cowboys management and ownership. So I, I would be surprised if they made a move on that end. But uh, if, if there's a big change in Dallas, I would think it would be on the defensive side of the ball. All right. And so then, Dominique, <clears throat> pardon me, let me come to you. I, I noticed your skeptical expression as we were listening to Jerry Jones. What was that face for? So, I mean, first of all, this job feels like it is too big for Mike McCarthy. Like that motorcycle on the cover of Purple Rain looks like it's too big for Prince. He doesn't seem to be <laughs> able to handle this job at the time. And, and Dan is right. Dan is right about that defense. That defense is really bad. That defense stinks like earring backs. So I'd be surprised if Mike Nolan comes back. There's no good reason to bring him back. And the last thing I wanted to say is Dak Prescott Prescott really should have some say in this decision because they decided not to extend Dak Prescott and give him a big contract. They franchise tagged him. So now Dak is in a position where he could choose to leave or go somewhere else or potentially pressure a trade or wait till he gets to a free agency. That was a mistake, but that gives him so much power in this situation that I think he has to be on board for whatever coach they keep or decide to bring in. So if I was Jerry Jones, rather than going on the radio, I would go to Dak Prescott's house and try to convince him that this is the right move or find out what he thinks the right move is at this time. I think what Jerry should do is try to get him to forget about the past, the way that they may have disrespected him or tried to shortchange him in the past. I would tell him something that my friend Andre used to tell me. Spaceships don't come equipped with rear view mirrors. That's where we're headed, so don't look back. And if I was Dak Prescott, I would respond to that by saying, Saying, that's because they dip as quick as they can and you will be all alone if i was dak prescott you get out of there i have so much more to say on this but i feel like i'm monopoli monopolizing the time i'll let damien say something before i i dominate this whole dak prescott segment yeah <laughs> so, so d wood let me come to you on that thought because <laughs> while we would not expect jerry jones to 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 uh to to, to, to consult with Dak on this decision, Dak really will have m much to say about it in the way of his actions, right? He holds the cards in this situation. If he doesn't like it, there are things he can do about it. Green, it's time to blow this joint up, man. Take some TNT to this thing and blow this thing up. I'm gonna just tell you, drop one bomb in here and it's gonna be over. The Dallas Cowboys, since Dak Prescott been out, have the worst offense in the league. Think about that. The Dallas Cowboys with Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, Zeke Elliott, they have a worse offense than your New York Jets, Greeny. That's bad, okay? So this whole Mike McCarthy, all, you know, with Jerry Jones talking, always oh, so preposterous. I mean, hell, if you got an offense worse than the Jets since your quarterback went down and with a cable backup, we got problems, yeah. Jack. I think that's I think actually Kelly a point. It's a point well taken because he's not just a capable backup. He's, he's a backup who I, I think is probably was the best backup or certainly the most ready to step in and win games of any in the NFL this season. So, Dominique, does that make sense to you? We can talk yeah. about how he doesn't want to pay two coaching staffs, but he does have a team that's worth five billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, I think he could afford it. That's not the problem. I think the continuity is something that he's more concerned with. I think the defense is a question, not a question. It, it stinks, as we talked about before, so they will change there. But I'm not not sure Kellen Moore is the golden child that they once thought he was. I understand you lost your quarterback, who the best quarterback they've had in Dallas in a long time since Tony Romo, obviously. I understand that you lost him, so your offense is going to take a dive, but it's not supposed to be this bad. Like, it reminds me of the song Silent Night. Like, a lot of people sing Silent Night. You can go on whatever streaming service and find a bunch of songs that a bunch of people that are singing Silent Night, but only the Temptations sang Silent Night, and that's what it feels like. <laughs> feels like Kelly Moore is coming Same. with this, this sheet of music, Same. and he's handing it to to anybody, to uh, Andy Dalton, and Andy Dalton goes out there and he tries to sing Silent Night, and everyone's like, oh, that's okay. 
But then when Dak's out there, people are standing up and crying and passing out because that boy is different. And so I'm not sure that Kellen Moore is as good as they all thought he was. So let me come back to Graziano to sort of finish this for the moment. What, if anything, should we expect to read into the DAC of it all based upon Mike McCarthy returning and whatever other decisions they make? Look, I mean, with DAC, it's going to come down to can they get the contract worked out. The Cowboys put forth an offer they thought would be good enough to keep him. It didn't turn out to be that. They'll probably franchise him again because they're going to have to get his health figured out before they can work on a long-term deal. But they still intend to bring him back, and there's no indication that he wants to go anywhere else. Being the quarterback of the Cowboys is historically a pretty good gig. Okay, we will leave it there for the moment, but there'll be a lot more to talk about on this as we go. Meanwhile, Graziano, let me run the hurry up through some other stories here, including the latest on Christian McCaffrey. What gives? Yeah, rotten year for Christian McCaffrey continues. He missed time with a shoulder injury. He missed time with an ankle injury. He hurt his thigh during their bye week two weeks ago, and now seems like he's likely to miss yet another game with the injury. Just a, just a terrible season for Christian McCaffrey from a health standpoint. Obviously, Carolina not playing for anything. They say they'll bring him back if he is healthy, but with three games left to go, you do have to wonder if it's just about next year for Christian McCaffrey. Henry Ruggs, the Oakland, uh, Oakland <laughs> Las Vegas rookie wide receiver, uh, has been placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. Las Vegas game is tomorrow night against the Chargers. That means Henry Ruggs will miss that game. The Raiders look like they will be shorthanded on defense too. Uh, they might be with, without Jonathan Abram. Cleveland Farrell could be a rough night uh, for the Raiders in a game they absolutely need to win. And this is an interesting note in Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers put their kicker, their punter, and their long snapper on the COVID-19 reserve list. That's the entire special teams battery. It depends on whether they are close contacts, in which case they could be back after five days, or whether any of them tested positive, in which case they would have to miss the game this weekend. That is why the Buccaneers have kicker Greg Joseph on their practice squad and used 